Good day viewers and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. Today I would like to also welcome you to the studio of the National Television Network, NTN. Our discussion today surrounds activities that have affected the banana, banana production recently. And with me to discuss this uh, program is, uh, to my immediate right, is Mr. Alkena Janki, who is an officer attached to the Banana Productivity um, Improvement Unit, BPIP. And next to him, we have farmer exporter, Mr. Nicholas Faisal. And then to the end, we have Mr. Clitus Alexander, who is the Crop Protection Officer in the Research Division in the Department of Agriculture. Welcome, gentlemen, to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Janki, before we really get into the meaty gritty of the activities, I just want you to just give an overview of the operations of the BPIP. Okay, the BPIP is a project set up by the government of St. Lucia with support from the Taiwanese Fund, ICDF. Mm -hmm. And that project started in 2017, in um, April 2017. And the, the goal of the project is to increase production and productivity. Yeah. When, when we came in, we, we were of the expectation that they had approximately 3,000 acres of bananas on the production. However, when we, went as, when we went about surveying using GIS, we realized that we only had a, uh, about 1,117 acres there about. Okay. So we had to work to increase our production base. Okay. So you're, where you're at now, because I remember when uh, the project was organized, production levels were at six tons to the acre. All right, and your, your levels were to increase it to, what, to 16 tons. Where, where, you, where are you now? Well, our, our overall goal is to, to try to reach 20, 20, 20 tons to the acre. Mm -hmm. However, we did a survey in um, between July, August, and September last year, mm -hmm. and we found that our production is, uh, is approximately between 40, 14 and 16 tons okay. to the acre. Okay. But I mean, but I know, for example, we have produced bananas up to 40 tons to the acre. I know in, in model farms we did that. So I mean, that's, <laughs> nothing, that's nothing new, Janki. So yeah. I'm hoping that you'll hopefully to get there someday. Yes, definitely. Um, for right now, as we speak, um, in the Cronlands Diglo area, mm -hmm. we, are, we are reaching at 23 tons to the acre. Well, it is very yes. good. Okay. I know the other aspect, apart from the, uh, increasing production and quality, um, there is the section of, uh, of pest control. and the control of black seagull toka. Tell us a little about that. Well, the black seagull toka is, is, is a very important pest, mm -hmm. <laughs> if I could put it that way, to us in, in, the, in the banana industry. And it's very important that we manage it and manage it effectively. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we have a system of monitoring the disease mm -hmm. where we have what we call reference sites. These are fa farms that represent a, a geographic location. And we would monitor the disease levels on these farms on a weekly basis. And based on the disease levels, then we would do a treatment intervention. Okay. We would spray the farms for, for the disease. So where, where are you at now? I mean, are you sa farmer satisfied? You all are satisfied? Are you on point? Are you, the objective being, is being met? Well, right now, as we speak, the disease level is, is probably managed. Mm -hmm. However, there are a number of factors that could affect the disease levels mm -hmm. and water, water logging, mm -hmm. um, weed levels, the trashing, and all these things could affect the, the, the disease levels. Okay. Now, this thing, a, lot of, a lot of it depends on what the farmer does in the field. So all you could do is encourage this farmer to do the necessary practices. Which is good agricultural practices. Yes. Good. But if the farmer chooses not to do it, yeah. then you have a problem. Yeah. So we have to encourage the farmer and work with him to ensure that these farms are properly managed. Okay, COVID came in, which is of course affected a number of, uh, well, worldwide. I mean, uh, that, that, that um, 
the uh, coronavirus is, was, 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 I mean, very significant, and it is, I think it's still around. But however, during the lockdown, uh, tell us exactly how your office was able to operate with the farmers. Well, what we had to do, we, we, we were able to provide the farmers with the, the, the necessary pass that they needed to go to the farms mm -hmm. and to take a worker with them. But what happened is that um, the farmers were not able to have the, the, the requisite number of workers that they would need. Right. So it would have affected their, their production and productivity and, and, and limited what could have been done on the farm. Mm -hmm. So in that way, it would have limited their, or, or reduced, cause a reduction in their production and, and the practices that needed to be done. On so Mr. Faisal, from a farmer's standpoint, how did COVID affect you as a farmer and of course, did it have any effect on your um, exporting business? Well, I think the fact that the farmers were able to get passes to access their farms, mm -hmm. um, that intervention w was strategic and important. It would have affected the farmer a lot more if that support didn't come through the system. Mm -hmm. So he was able to go to his farm and do what he, he was accustomed of doing without significant um, um, delays, so to speak. Um, again, because of the, the, the farm, the activities on the farm, we, what we saw happening was farmers probably returning because the typical farmer goes to his farm like 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning, and 11, 12, 1 o'clock <laughs> would be back home. So in a, in a sense, it, it fell within the curfew period and allowed the farmer to operate seamless, it would seem. Mm -hmm. However, we, we were not, the, the farmer was affected a lot more by the dry spell mm -hmm. than the, the, the problems associated okay. with the COVID. Okay, so we'll come to that. Yes, yes. Um, and, and as far as production was concerned, production continued, as a matter of fact, on the day of the curfew, mm -hmm. the lockdown, when it took effect. We had just purchased, in fact, we had almost two and a half thousand cases of bananas ready to ship the next morning. Wow. And the vessel was already in port. And, but it required a lot of mobilization and networking. But we successfully got that vessel out of the island on the, the evening of Wednesday, okay. that day when the, the lockdown commenced. So, and since then, we have continued to export bananas, although in a significantly reduced production okay. level. But during COVID, you were you were able to get the production levels that you, you needed? No, okay. no. Okay. Because so, already, so already to an extent, the dry season too mm -hmm. okay. was already affecting production. Okay. At that point in time? Yes, it was. Okay. You know. So, Janky, I know based on that, there is a, a post-COVID stimulus package to the farmers, okay? Mm -hmm. um, when I say farmers, farmers in general, okay? But however, we stick into bananas. What it is that um, the government have in store for the banana farmers? Well, the government through the, the, the BPIP have provided the support to farmers with regards to one treatment of fertilizer, one application of fertilizer at 250 kg bags per acre or 425 kg bags per acre, mm -hmm. along with one treatment of oil fungicide mix for the control of black cigar toker. Okay. And, and, and that, that is free. Uh -huh. However, in order for the farmers to be qualified for the support, the farms must be in um, condition. You, have, you must rehabilitate it if the farm is abandoned or semi-abandoned. You have to clean it up and the farm must be at, at you know, a level that, to show that you're in, in production okay. and, not, and not an abandoned farm. So you all have started that, that, that program and where is it at now? Um, have you all given all the fertilizers and the treatment to the, all the farmers? Well, with regards to the fertilizer, we have given most of the farmers fertilizer so far. Mm -hmm. To date, we have given just a little under 9,000 bags of fertilizer, 8,700 plus bags of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So the farmers that are remaining are farmers who, who need to co com complete the rehabilitation process. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it's completed, then they would get the, the, the fertilizer. Okay. For the oil, we have given a little over 12,000 liters of oil, which is about half of, of our production, of our acreage so far. Okay. But the balance of the farmers, as soon as they become, the areas become due for treatment, then the, the material will be available. But I want to bring in um, um, Kriklas here because the control of the Black Signal Toker, um, I want you to tell St. Lucia what it is, one, and two, 
um, for effective control, what is required? Because if your neighbor is not doing what, what is supposed to do, the good agricultural practices, you know, so take us through that, please. Well, for black cicatrical disease control, the preferred method is an integrated approach method. Okay. What you have realized is that the use of oil alone will not sufficiently control black cicatrical for you. Now, globally, what is happening as you have the, 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 uh, the change in climate, the increase in temperature, on my observation, you realize that normally during the dry season, you have less moisture, so the, it's a fungus. So normally in the dry season, you don't have problem with fungal diseases. Now, the oil, a lot of people believe, well, the oil is a fungicide. Now, when you, when you have fungicide, fungicide means, well, it's going to kill the fungicide. The fungus. But, right, the, but the oil is not a fungicide. The oil is like a fungistat. It will sort of reduce the spread of the organism on the leaves. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, in the dry season, it's not a problem because high temperature, the fungus is under control. But as you approach the rainy season, that is where it's a problem because leaf wetness is a critical factor in the development of the fungus. Mm -hmm. Now, the fungus produces both by spores, and you have, the, it's both sexual. sexual and asexual reproduction in the, in, in, in the spores. Now, when, when you, 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 you are not able to control probably the, the spores, remember, when it's raining, the fungus tend to spread on the leaves because of the rain. Right. Now, again, through the production of the spores, the spores can travel long distances. So it's very, it's, it's, it's critical to have, an, as I said, an integrated approach. With an integrated approach, you look, look at all the activities that will sort of reduce the spread, that will be able to control the disease. Things like drainage, as I said, moisture is critical. If you are able to remove the excess moisture in the field, yes, you can control the fungus. If you do your proper field sanitation, plant density, you have more air circulation. The more air circulation you have, the better it is in terms of control of, of, of the disease. As I said, oil alone will not control the disease. As Mr. Junkie said, farmer's input is very important. Even though you, you go out there and you advise and you give the farmer all the sound advice, if the farmer is, is not adhering to whatever advice that is given, you're going to end, end up with, with, with problems. Because again, with black cigar duka, you cannot spray one farm. Right. If, you, if you spray in an area, you have to spray the, the whole area. Now again, for black cigatuka, we have very few fungicides available for black cigatuka. And the worst thing to happen is that if you have fungicide resistant, now there are about six fungicides available for use in black cigatuka. Now if there is fungicide resistant, it means that fun, fun, fungicide, it has to be withdrawn from the market, from the fields for, for, for example, a year or two. Now, if you remove, say, for example, two fungicides, you are left with four. It makes the, 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 the controlling this disease more critical. So, as I said, it's an integrated, it's a holistic approach where you do all, all the practices that you advise to do, and then you are able to control this disease. Mr. Fessel, give me, give me a farmer's perspective of the control of the black sugar toker. I think those farmers who are now or who have continued to produce bananas I think have a very good understanding of what the control methods or the, the approach ought to be. Um, with the involvement of the supply of oil as regularly as it is now, to an extent you see farmers making a concerted effort to ensure that they do what is necessary to control the black cigar toker. Now, you see the understanding from a farmer perspective is if, you, if you're in the business of producing bananas, you need to be able to sell bananas to generate cash flow that would allow you to continue to do what is necessary to control black cigar toker. Mm -hmm. And more often you see there is a breakdown in that cycle when the farmer is not able to dispose of the volumes that he has spent so much, put so much effort in producing, mm -hmm. and him not being able to sell it. It affects his ability to continue to do all of the requisite practices that must be done to ensure that the control is 
effective. Okay. But I have seen, and I'm sufficiently convinced at this point, that the greater majority of farmers understand what black cigar toka is to them in, in terms of how it affects their cash flow mm -hmm. and why it's important that they must control it and that the fact that there, there is a, 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 the, the availability of the fungicide and the oil mix is always readily available and is to the, to the extent that the farmer doesn't have to, to be pressured to get it, so to speak, mm -hmm. unless it's money that he doesn't have to mm -hmm. buy it. Mm -hmm. But once he has the cash, and the, the oil is always available, he understands that he must use oil to help with the control. Yeah, I think, I think the farmers have the, the, the grip of the control, yes. and yeah. that is why we are still exporting to the, to, to the UK. Yes. Right? yes. Unlike the other islands, right? Yes. <laughs> we'll, yes. Do our, we'll do for our first break. Okay. We are watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. Don't go away. When a hurricane is approaching, safety of life and the preservation of livelihoods is most important. We should take heed. Fill five gallon buckets and other containers with water prior to the storm. You'll need it to water transplants in the greenhouse if you have lost power. Mulch as many bare rows as possible before the storm. Mulching will help prevent erosion and wind damage and will also minimize soil splashing into the crop canopy which can cause disease. Rip mature crops such as tomatoes and melons because they will split after heavy rains. Pick coconuts and consider harvesting cut flowers right before the storm as they will be easily damaged by rain and wind. Fortify any field trellises so you don't lose the crops they are supporting. Wherever possible, unhang trellis plants and place them to lay flat on the ground. Make sure tractors and other equipment and supplies are secured. Don't leave market baskets, picking crates, dip tape, or irrigation pipes in the field or lane around where they can become missiles in high winds or get washed away by flood waters. And stock up on gas for generators and other needed farm equipment. Remember, this is the hurricane season and we should be prepared. A message brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. And of course, we are discussing activities that really affected the banana production recently. And as you heard earlier, we spoke about the, um, the, the COVID that, that affected, and we also heard about the control of the Black Secret Toker. The BPIP program is well on its way, and of course, so far, Farmers have the grasp, or the, they have grasp, the handle of con the black cigar toker control. Mr. Janki, I will go. Let's continue with the other um, pest that really affected the um, the banana um, production, um, but I suppose it's it's, all, it's under control now. That is the banana mealybug. Okay, um, but before we get into this, I want to ask Mr. Um, with Clitus, tell us, uh, tell us about the banana um, mealybug. Um, basically, a mealybug is a soft-bodied insect, and they are covered with what is called a white mealy, and they are sucking insects. Now, the level of damage that the mealybug will do on a particular crop will de depend on the biomass. When I say biomass, I mean the number of millibugs you have on, 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 on your plant. Now again, as we saw with bananas, the banana plant is a perfect host for a millibug because you, are, you have all this, the, the species where the, on the pseudo stem where the millibug can hide. And as we saw in the dry season, and again, we have had millibug problems before mm -hmm. in bananas, but we were able to, 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 to control it. But the problem we faced was that the problem with millibug was not new. And we sort of delayed in terms of applying the control to the, to the to millibug infestation out in the field. And as a result, we find the millibug population was out of control. And during the dry season, as I said, globally, 
insects, you tend to have insect problem, especially in the dry season. And a lot of research is being done now, and most of the findings are showing well in the dry season, especially the drought that we had, it's the perfect condition for, for, for multiplication of those insects. And, and for mealybug now, there are very few chemicals that will control mealybug. The mealybug has what is called a waxy coating. Mm -hmm. Now, even though you apply pesticides to the mealybug, the mealybug will find a way to repel the, those pesticides because of the uh, waxy coating it has. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, again, an integrated approach to pest management would, would be the preferred way of controlling the mealybug. You have trade issues, you have pesticide resistance, you have the decision to make wh which is the, the, the best pesticide to use on mealybug. And we were not able to, to get over this problem during the, 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 the dry season. And on my observation, this mealybug is now present in almost all the banana growing areas. I've been to Canel, is there, I've been to Roseau, the Mabuya Valley area, if you go up in Babon on plantains. So it's a, it's a real problem for us now to control this mealybug. And especially as we, as, as we heard a few months ago, we had a number of shipments that were rejected in Barbados because of this, of this mealybug. Good. So, Janky, so from the BPIB standpoint, where, what, what were measures that you put in place to ensure that the control? Okay, when we realized that we had an upsurge in the level of mealybug in, 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 in the fields, we, what we did, we, our officers went ahead and we had farm clinics to sensitize the farmers on the situation and what can be done to control or to manage the levels of mealybug in the fruits. So we had these clinics throughout the island. Um, there was also a, a, a small video that was, that was produced by one of our officers to demonstrate to the farmers how to process the fruit, especially if mealybug is, is, is present. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from your standpoint, Mr. Faisal, farmer, exporter, how did you deal with it from a, a farmer stand from a farmer standpoint, and then tell us the effect it had on you on the export? Well, certainly it, it presented a serious challenge to the farmers, and you know if you go back to the history of bananas back in the days when we produced 29 tons plus per acre, the integrated pest management approach was in full force. Mm -hmm. I mean, the farmers were permitted to use nematicides, insecticides which help the plant root system, the plant's ability right. to uh, utilize the nutrients in the soil and the fertilizer worked very well. And you had healthy plants producing sizable bunches. You're talking about bunch to box ratios of one and, a half, one and a half boxes per bunch or two boxes per bunch. But since the advent of fair trade and the limitation on chemical usage in bananas, we've seen that the level of pest infestation at the field level has grown. And as such, the, 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 the basis on which fair trade existed was to reduce on the, in the, the extent to which chemicals was used in bananas. The harsh chemicals. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we saw happening is our, our own production efficiency dropped as a result of that. And so with millibugs appearing at the level that it did this time around, it, it really, it was climax, it was really climaxing a dry spell that started last year. We didn't get so much rain during the rainy season. I mean, I can hardly recall having seen the rivers go down twice or three times with heavy downpours. There, were, there was rain, but not a lot of rain to have flash flooded. So what we saw into this dry season was the propensity or the infestation level of millibugs rising to a level that nobody had seen before. Okay. And the, the, the sad reality is that it featured in the bananas, and whereas the UK, you don't make a point of, of highlighting it as, a, as an issue for them, but Barbados, on one occasion, just in a very ad hoc and irresponsible way, I can add, just decided to reject a complete, uh, an entire consignment of bananas. And we're talking about 
almost 3,000 boxes of bananas. And the, their reason was because of the infestation level, which was beyond the, the, their threshold, which was never something that was discussed with even our plant protection, plant quarantine department in St. Lucia. And what we saw coming out of that was, yes, all of the efforts, all of the clinics that were done to help farmers understand what must be done. But here you have a situation where farmers now had to reposition themselves and their operations to, to capture the control of the millibug, which, was, which necessitated a new discipline in the harvesting and handling operations. It requires a second tub with soap liquid. It required that the farmer would do the field sanitation and apply an insecticide at the field level to ensure that he reduced the population at the field level, but that you find the millibugs had already found their way to the bunches under the blue bags. Mm -hmm. And so at harvesting time, again, you had to um, painstakingly try to use a toothbrush or toothpicks to get millibugs mm -hmm. out of the crown. And to a lot of farmers, that was proving challenging. Mm -hmm. One, because the amount, if a farmer was used to doing 60 boxes per day with five or six work, uh, workers, the six workers would probably produce 25 boxes. And his, his issue is, how do I pay for the people who have come here to work for me? Because 25 boxes would not offset the cost of labor and justify mm -hmm. my own effort. Right. So to an extent, you found people not being as vigilant as they should. And even though those in interventions were in fact made, we continued with the problem to the extent that we, we ended up having four consecutive shipments rejected in Barbados. Four? Four. So at what point did the Department of Agriculture come in as far as the research division? No, it was in? almost instantly. At the same time of that reject, of that consignment being rejected in Barbados, all hands were on deck. I mean, there was one consignment that was returned. The vessel actually went to Barbados and they didn't allow one box to be to be offloaded off the vessel. The entire vessel was re returned to St. Lucia, you see? And I think that situation, to my mind, underscores a bigger issue in terms of trade relations between the two, I two islands yes. and all of the corresponding issues that it will bring about. But surely what we saw happening there was a breakdown of, of confidence in a system that would now put the farmer at a difficult end. And me as the middleman exporter at a worse off position, mm -hmm. because to this day, I have not been able to pay 115 or 120 farmers the, the monies that were expect, they were expecting from the sale of bananas at the time. So what happened to the, those shipments that you lost? The shipments were, um, they were disposed of in Barbados on two occasions. They were fumigated once. Um, I had to pay for the cost of fumigation, but didn't get the returns from what came out of the fumigation. Mm -hmm. There was one time the entire vessel returned, so I had to pay. Um, there's a charge on the vessel to return to St. Lucia, and the bananas had to be disposed of um, through farmers with pigs and animals. Um, and then you had one time they had to burn the fruit in, at the ports in Barbados. And the, the last time, we don't quite understand what happened. They, they, they allowed the farm, they allowed the, the ripeners to take in the bananas, rewash them in Barbados. And then now, in the, in the soap liquid solution. Which you all did already here. Which we did already, but they were not satisfied yeah. that it, it because they, Again, the sightings of millibugs at the point of inspection by the plant quarantine department in Barbados was beyond their threshold. But and was it working? Okay. Can you explain the threshold levels? Um, basically, what happened when you export in, the quarantine officers will, will supposed to come and take a 10% sample. Now, normally in science, 10% is supposed to be across the board. So a 10% will probably give you an idea as to what is, is happening in the entire consignment. But the problem with millibug is that whilst you may not see the millibug, remember you have eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, it will take a few days for, for, you, for the eggs to develop. Mm -hmm. But what he's saying there, probably after, yes, they were bought in Barbados and then they went to the ripening room and then they started seeing 
milibag again. Okay. Now, the other impact of the, the problem of the milibag was, as he said, fumigation. Yes, in Barbados, right now, they're rejecting the bananas. And in England, the problem is, is there, but what is happening is being fumigated. Now, when the fumigation is done, that is a cost to the farmer. Okay. Probably money that the farmer should have been receiving, mm -hmm. now it's a cost to pay for fumigation. Okay. Now, the chemical that they're using for fumigation, it's a chemical, methyl bromide. Mm -hmm. Methyl bromide is a, is, a, is a chemical that was supposed to have been phased out globally. Oh, God. <laughs> so I don't think, th yes, it was done in Barbados, but if persons, it's an organophosphate, persons now are worried about organophosphate. A lot of persons don't want you to use or organophosphate on the fruits that, so, so that they will not buy the that, fruit. That they're, they, they, oh, they, they're going to eat. So we find ourselves in a situation now, we are left with the only, what I'm, what I'm saying now is that we have to fill sanitation. We have to go back in the field and correct the problem okay. out in the field. It's, it's not a problem that will be solved in Barbados. We have to solve mm -hmm. the, the problem. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a phytosanitary issue. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to send pests, quarantine pests to another, to another country. Yes, yes, so yes, the, yes. it's within the purview because Barbados, they have plantain, they have other, other they species. Have, they have bananas, yeah, yeah, they have bananas species. Right. So it's a way of protecting the agriculture. Mm -hmm. So we cannot blame blame them, blame them for, for this. As I, as I said, we have to right now go out in the field and solve the problem. Right. When we had the, the problem with the hibiscus pink millibar, what we did, we went and we bought the an, anagyrus kamali, yeah. which is the, 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 the organism that is going to to control this, the, the, some of the millibank for you. But what is happening right now? Remember in the 1960s, 1950s, persons were not doing, using pesticides. Pest control was an ecological problem. Correct. You had all the beneficial organisms out in the field that were able to control those insects. But what has happened? Because we've been using so much chemicals and so on, we have been destroying one. nature. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. right now, what are we doing? <laughs> we're depending on chemicals right, alone to control exactly. those yes, organisms. Yes, 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 yes. And the chemicals, the organisms are building resistance, resistance against those yes. things. And, and, they, and, they, and they, are, they are not working. Yep, yep. Now, again, for millibug, an approved way of controlling millibug is through biological control, where you get the, the biological agent. Because for every organism, there's what is called a natural enemy. The natural enemy will not be in St. Lucia, it may be in Zimbabwe, it may be in some other country, but you have to find the natural enemy. But in banana production, because we, we're using lots of fungicides to control the Baxica toka, so it will be very difficult now for you to spend money on those bio, bio agents, bring it in, and then the farmer is going to use the pesticide, which is going to destroy mm -hmm. the, the, the organism. So Mr. Fessel, you lost, your, you lost the, the Barbados market? Well, yes, um, because what has happened, our inability to satisfy the market demands mm -hmm. at the time as a result of the shortfalls, mm -hmm. they've had to resort to alternative suppliers. Okay. And they've, been, they've gone to Suriname, okay. who is now, well, they're the ones dominating the market okay. as it stands. So okay, so we'll, we'll go to an instructional video that we prepared uh, to end this segment so that people can see exactly what they should do or what was done in the control of the banana millibug. Tout femme Afrique Saint Lucie. Moi c'est Monsieur Stephen Monchery et puis Monsieur Joshua Suraj, officier BPIP en ministre agricole en Saint Lucie. Qu'on peut déjà connaître et puis j'attends. C'est juste là nous avons un problème qui très sérieux en fig. Millibug. Millibug là qui a affecté fig là et puis babad pavlé c'est type de ça en les fig là. Yoja Ils ont déjà deux bouts d'importation de figues en cette ici. Tout le temps, nous n'avons pas été contrôlés les problèmes. Ce qui m'a nous à contrôler les problèmes de Milibog là, il y a quatre différentes manières de nous à contrôler les Milibog là. Premièrement, c'est les Milibog là qui a été oué en bas, c'est les vieux feuilles là en l'air de figues là. Si vous regardez bien, vous voyez, c'est pour nettoyer les figues là bien. Ils ont été oué en bas, ça, et bien. Les figues là, jeté, ils ont monté en l'air, ils ont attrapé les coyotes, ils ont collé en l'air, pas de figues là. Donc on est pour nettoyer les figues là bien. 
c'est une manière. L'autre manière, c'est pour servir d'ailleurs qui neuf. Plus vite on mette en l'air figue là, plus mieux pour pour pêcher bug là, monter en l'air en l'air figue là. Aussi, on y peut tenir habitation en net, parce que c'est bug là qui va rester en bas zèb là. On y peut assurer ou spray et pas bas figue là, pas ni pas ni zèb. C'est pour mieux manier ou qu'à contrôler mille bug là. Comme Marie Lailona, bien pour assurer Mili bog la pas trop pécoy en lep pas de figla. Si vous passez vide à fin neuf et de la fin qui tout était il pas qu'à empêcher mili bog la en tout en lep figla. Kou ka wè en lep fixa. Fixa ni lay lon en lay mais lay lon ça a pas tout était et puis pas tout lay lon neuf. Et ou est il still ni mili bog lan lay. So important pour servir la fin qui neuf et de la fin qui tout était pour protéger figla. L'autre manière ou ka contrôler mili bog la ou ka ou ça servi en chimique ou ka servi on ka mik nou ka kouye nim oil ou ka spray pie figla et pou ka spray se figla OK et ka pêcher mili bug la rester en les pat figla ça c'est deuxième manière troisième manière nou sa servi pou contrôler mili bug la so nou sa servi on lot bet nou pou ko sa nou sa on pa nou sa fait mais nou pou ko ka fait pou ka servi lot bet pou manger c'est ça qui mauvais pour empêcher Pouvez aller partir. La seule manière ou pas pour servir chimical. Et quatrième manière, première manière, c'est lorsqu'à harvest figla ou qu'à nettoyer figla et plaver bien. À bout de cela, nous qu'à faire un pratique à ce qui manière pour laver figla et plaver bien. Ok, bonjour, moi c'est Joshua Suraj, et nous faisons sélection. Je n'ai sélectionné figla pour mettre en manière qu'à contrôler mes les bugs là from sélection. Ok, vous avez quoi faire lorsqu'à sélect? Pour casser les figues là, ou pas casser les figues là trop gros, parce que pour ça qu'on trouve la figue là bien, on peut casser les les cinq grains, six grains. Ok, plus si les gros, plus c'est difficile pour ça de laver mes bugs là, famille. So, casser les coupes sans dé. So, regardez où j'ai mis les bugs là, les dents, figues là. Quand même, il y a les feuilles qui mettent sur mes feuilles qui net. Quand même, il y a les feuilles qui ne mettent pas. Ok. Oui. Ou quand même, figue là. Lorsqu'il est là, quand même, il drain dans les feuilles là pour tâche là pour at least en trois pour cinq minutes. Ok. Ok. Ça m'a fini. Excellent action là. Nous allons aller en bas pour la brise pour laver figue là. Ok, nous avons fini avec les figues là, nous allons aller dans le baf pendant, mais les figues là dans le baf pendant. Là, nous avons les figues là pour les bugs, nous avons les différents. Nous avons les pipi, nous avons les éperons, nous avons les gloves, ok, pour laver les figues là. Alright, nous avons trois bagages qui nous servent pour contrôler les bugs là. Nous avons les long brush, un petit long brush, c'est pour passer en fat, pas les figues là pour tirer les bugs là. Nous avons les tough brush, tough brush qui est net, qui est un brush là pour trop. Top red, une bonne molle. Et qu'on est pour les liquides soupes là. Liquides soupes là, il est pour lemon flavor, lemon flavor, ok? Lemon liquid soup. On va mettre about 20 ml à la bave pan de l'eau, ok? So, nous allons mettre un liquide soupes là, brisé. Et l'autre bave pan là, on va mettre l'autre bave pan là, c'est New Zealand alum là. C'est quand des bave pan. Il y en a pour liquide soupes là, il y en a pour New Zealand alum là. Ok, c'est le fond qui est là pour laver les figues là, pour tout le crown là. Alright, donc on va prendre, on va mettre ça pour y mettre de l'eau. Donc pour le liquide soupe là, ça travaille bien. Et on va prendre pas de figues à présent, on va commencer à prendre pas de figues. On va prendre ce classe là, on va mettre ça dedans, on va prendre le premier baf pan là. On va mettre le jet cluster, on va mettre le bas de ton sec cluster, sec cisco, on va mettre le top cluster dedans. Ok? On va finir. On va garder en fait. Quand on a deux brushes là, le premier brush là, on va garder. On va garder en fait ces pattes là pour mettre le mix. Tout mille bugs, on va contrôler tout mille bugs, tout 
Qu'est-ce que c'est ouais pièce Paille blanc ouais, c'est pour laver bien laver. Bien, quand on va garder bouteille, avec ça on garder bouteille. Si vous pièce de bail blanc, vous encore un bout de là. Vous pouvez mettre un petit peu de toothbrush. Vous pouvez mettre un autre baffe. Vous pouvez mettre un peu de bail blanc. 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 Vous pouvez bien prêter à nettoyer. Parce que vous pouvez mettre un peu de bail blanc dans l'autre pays. Je viens de y enseler le château. Ok. On doit regarder un bout là. Sur la pièce mille et quoi. Servir tout brush là pour nettoyer. Pour tirer tout. Bien laver. On met un autre baffe pan. Sur tout tout cluster quoi. Regardez. Fait même bail là. Répète même bail là. Tout cluster. Là on finit là. On va on va on va tirer un autre seul logement ni aux îles à l'homme là. Donc on met une table ready pour pas. Quoi si le vieux gardé encore? Par rapport à la chance, mais tu as vieux gardé sur la pièce mille et bagarre encore. Donc on met une table là pour pas. C'est fixe ça qui est la table là. C'est fig qui a pas ouvert pour pas. Y a pas ni pièce mille et bagarre en l'air. On va juste vieux réfléchir tes milliers de bas où à ce que ça nous fait pour matin. Parce que c'est important pour nous. Tu es bé maquette figue là babad. Si nous passons chez ça, babad qui achète l'autre côté pour vendre figue. Et pour majorité of farmers en one city region four, c'est regional qui va vendre figue babad. Pour mieux manger, nous n'est pour la les quatre manières nous ça contrôle. Pour mieux manger, c'est assiwe pièce figue là net. C'est mille bagues là qui assiwe en bas, c'est vieux 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 feuille là et pour les c'est pièce figue là. Si on peut assiwe pièce figue là net. Deuxième manière où nous quoi quoi servir c'est pour servir d'ailleurs neuf qui tweeté. Là on servit d'ailleurs fin en royon cou que mi claquer d'ailleurs fin en ca fini. Et puis pas ca compte l'eau compte les 1000 bagues là. Troisième troisième manière nous ça sert nous 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 ça fait nous ça servit en Tibet. Nous quoi que ça en anglais biological 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 control. Mais nous pour quoi vester ça. So nous ca servir à brésil nous ca servir on chimique nous va couiller nim oil nous va spray bitation et spray ces pifigla pour contrôler mille bagues là et quatrième et dernière manière que nous monter en chaîne là c'est jour où à couper figla à siwe ou laver figla bien on y on make sure on y de bathtub yon pour de l'eau savon et puis yon pour alum et puis fungal flow là on fait nous bien laver figla make sure on y brush ou de brush yon petit brush qui molle pour ça Nettoyer en ces fonds de figue là. Plus petit ou couper ces pâtes de figue là, 5, 6, ou qu'à ça laver figue là, plus mieux. So make sure ou fait ça, et tout fait ça, nous pas de pièces problème, et puis mille bocs babad, et tout le et puis les exporteurs là, qui happy. Comment j'ai dit au Merci, monsieur Steve, mon chéri, et puis Joshua Souraj, nous sommes officier BPIP en ministre agricole. Pour plus d'informations, contactez le bureau BPIP à Limo. 468 4160 et bien on s'a contacté Pierce BPIP Phil Officer en Wijon. Merci. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this little instructional video that was played. And of course, to date, I'm thinking here that we, we have it under control to a certain level. Um, I'm hoping that um, moving forward, there will be some level of discussion between St. Lucia and Barbados to ensure that trade you know, is looked at in a different manner and there should be dialogue and to ensure that whatever problems um, are there sh should be resolved in a very technical manner. So I'm very happy that you saw this video. So moving forward, we're looking at effects that, that uh, affected the 
production of bananas. And then, Mr. Jung here, let us go to one of the, the drought we had this year. That was one of the worst droughts we ever faced in St. Lucia. Tell us about this uh, from BPIP standpoint and you know, what um, measures you know, will be taken down the road. Okay, well certainly this, this drought was one of the worst droughts that we have, we had experience in recent history mm -hmm. in terms of the banana industry. And I do not think that the farmers were prepared for such a drought either. Mm -hmm. And we realized that it, it um, if I could say, destroyed the farms, a, a number of farms. Approximately 54% of our farms were out of production during that period of time. And that the remaining 46% still had significant decline in production levels. The only part of the island where we really had any production is the, the Crownlands Deglo area where we have this high water table. So production is, do not really go down during the dry season. As a matter of fact, production goes up in that area mm -hmm. during, the, during the dry season. But we realize that most of the, most, throughout the island, most of our farms production went down significantly. Mm -hmm. And to mitigate that, I mean, there's nothing that we could have done this year, but in, in going forward, what we have done was to order some irrigation equipment, drip line, pump, and we are hoping to, to um, bring back irrigation in, in the Roseau area, parts of the Mabuya Valley, um, four canals, Trumase, and some other areas where we have built some small dams in Piton, that's in the Passions Monrepo area, Moro, that's in Loro Tiroche, and Esperas, that's the, the Bellevue area, to, to get these farms irrigated. And we're hoping that, that these systems can be online before the year ends. So come next year, during the dry season, these farms could be irrigated and would not have this, the, we would not see what we saw this year in terms of the decline in production and even farms being abandoned because of the, the, the dry season. You know, I'm hearing all this and you know what, came to mind, um, especially in the, uh, the Roseau Valley. We spent so much money building this dam, you know, and uh, what's, where, where's the use of it? <laughs> sad, eh? very sad, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we built another one in um, the Deglo area, mm -hmm. and again, the farmers kept saying, we do not, we do not want irrigation, we want drainage. Because the water table there is very high, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And look at it, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and look now, we need the water, especially in the Roso, Roso, Roso area, all mm -hmm. right? And, and just, it's there, you know? Well, at the, t at the time when the system was put in place, the farmers did not appreciate the, you know, the irrigation system. Exactly. But now they're all calling for it. They've been calling yeah. for a long time. <laughs> They've been calling for it for a long time, you know? We, but sadly, but I'm happy to know that at least it's going to be, you know, revitalized and farmers are going to be using it. Um, I'm happy also to, what I want to find out is that I, I hear you mention bringing in equipment and stuff like that. Um, are the farmers going to be paying for this? The plan right now is to give it to the farmers free. Mm -hmm. However, the farmers would have to put in the, what we call the sweat capital. They would have to put in the labor to, to install the system. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the equipment would be coming in free. Okay, all right. Mr. Faisal, how did the drought affect you as a farmer? And of course, I'm sure by extension, it affected you from, the, from an export standpoint. Okay, uh, from a farmer perspective, um, when you have dry spells, farmers generally don't feel motivated to do much on the farm mm -hmm. because the end result of the effort you put in is not likely to succeed in the way you would like, want it to. I mean, you have to maintain your farm. Mm -hmm. Um, you would have to do your cropping. Some of what you must do to save the bunches, in the context of bananas, to save the bunches that you've seen the plant through so that you can see it through harvesting. But this year, w what we saw happening to, to in the, as the dry spell was maybe unprecedented, and it's, it's more in recent memory. You would speak to different farmers and they, they will tell you they've seen worse droughts than that. But in recent times, we've not seen one as bad. Um, the fear, however, is having listened to Mr. Junkie speak of the irrigation support that is likely to come. What I have noticed myself, and I've recorded it, is that sadly, 
our agriculture, with, if it is, it's not likely to endure another dry spell like this, when our rivers cannot even sustain their flow. I mean, I took photos in the Mabuya Valley, in the lower, in the lower course of the river, and the, there was no water in the river. It had redu it's reduced to a mere trickle of a drain. And you see where farmers had pumps positioned on the river banks. They had no pumps because there was no water. It was just there was sand. No water. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So we need to, from a national perspective, we need to look at our, the issues of, of reforestation, in a sense, because you have a lot of abundant farms. A lot of farmers have moved away from bananas or moved away. Well, from time they move away from bananas, the, in, the other crops they've inter, intercropped, like grapefruits and oranges and the permanent tree crops, are all dying. A lot of parasites are taking over because some of those, because you know they needed the, the husbandry and the mm -hmm. agronomic practices that would enhance and the, the, the life of the plants. They're no longer there. So somewhere in the mix, you, you recognize there is need to cause some forestries from, uh, or to rejuvenate our ravines and streams so that you can have, a, a, to move away from just flash floods, but to have more retention of water in the catchment areas so that the rivers can flow. Even in the dry spell, at least you can have some water to irrigate. Because it's one thing to have irrigation equipment, and it's quite another thing not to be able to <laughs> extract water from the rivers. And, and this year, I made it a point of observing the Wani River was dry completely. The Mabuya River, when you look at Mabuya Valley, the potential that it has in its catchment to have reached that stage in the lower course of the river, not to see water flowing, speaks volumes to the state of affairs as it relates to that situation. And you have Tamazo, for example, that somewhere in the mix might be necessary at some point to look at establishing a dam for agriculture. Because then you have the potential of the Mabuya Valley as a valley, mm -hmm. rich valley lands, not being able to be utilized in the dry season mm -hmm. because the rivers don't have water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's quite unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we need to, we here making that observation mm -hmm. is critical, but the extent to which um, 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 it can, it, 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 it makes any headway is the extent to which the relevant authorities within the state recognizes that and somehow can work around. I mean, they, it, look at Haiti. Haiti is, is planting forestry. They're, re they're reforesting some of their dry lands. And maybe to an extent, something needs to be done to look at that aspect of it. So as far as banana production is concerned, the first set of rains coming out of a dry spell like that what you see happening is the extent of dehydration of plants. Mm -hmm. All banana plants with good sized bunches are snapping. One week we had plantain that we couldn't sell. We didn't have a market to buy. We had more than we had. We, we could have sold. And by the next week, we didn't have enough plantain to, to, for the demand of the market. Not that we didn't have plantains, but a significant percentage of the plantains just snapped. And that was it. They were not no longer marketable, and we didn't have available for the market. Okay. You know, so really the trade itself in the Barbados market and the Saint Kitts, the, the markets that I, I am trading with, especially Barbados, that they would require three thousand boxes last week. Okay, we're here for another week. Break. If you're watching our culture on the move. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. Banana farmers, remember Sorry, me? I destroyed the Grumichel banana variety some years ago. Now, my cousin, Tropical Race 4 or TR4, a Fusarium wilt banana disease is on the horizon in a more aggressive form and can wipe out the banana industry in a flash. Be vigilant. Don't bring any banana plants or plant tissue into the island. Report any unusual symptoms on your banana plots to the Department of Agriculture at telephone 468-5600 or the extension officer in your area. Remember, protect our vital banana industry. Welcome back to the program. As we are about to embark on our closing um, segment, I think we need to emphasize or, or re-emphasize um, on the horizon there is a, a Fusarium wilt disease um, which we call Tropical Race 4, in short, TR4. You have been seeing 
um, an ad that we have been running for about two months now uh, just to sensitize the public about that disease. And to speak about this disease is, of course, Mr. Cletus Alexander to tell us something about that disease. Well, TRO4 is a soil-borne fungal disease. It affects the plant by entering through the roots. So when it enters the root of the plant, it affects what is called the, the vascular bundles. Now in the vascular bundles, as, as we know in science, you have the phloem that bring food and the, the xylem, xylem that take in the water. Mm -hmm. So when this happens, the plant is not able to, to transport nutrients up to the leaves. And again, the food that is produced in the leaves are not able to get through the entire plant. So you find the plant is going to wilt and the plant is going to, to die. Now symptoms can vary. Now, the, the older leaves, they'll turn yellow and they will collapse around the, the plant, forming what is called a skirt, everyone is sure. And the younger leaves will stay healthy. And again, at the later stage, you may have a situation where, yeah, the plant is going to fruit, but the fruits are go going to be affected. But in terms of the impact of this disease, this is one of the most destructive diseases ever known to plant pathology. Wow. This, yes, it is one of them. Remember in the 1950s, we had what is called the Gros Michel variety. Mm -hmm. It, race one, destroyed the, the, the Gros Michel variety. Now race two, we have race two presently affecting the, the Macambo. Mm -hmm. Race three is not affecting bananas, but race four is affecting all species of Musa. Musa wow. right. Now, we were lucky in the 1950s in that when it decimated the, the, the Gros Michel, we were able to use the, the Cavendish. Now, with the Cavendish now very, very susceptible to this disease, we have a lot of problems now. We have a, a lot of researchers now doing what is called genetical mod genetic modification of the banana plant to tolerate this disease. You have researchers working on what is called biological agent bioagent like trichoderma species, bacillus. These are organisms that you can introduce in the fields that is going to control the, the pathogen for you. It's not 100% certain, but a lot of research is, is happening now. Now, a small country like ours where the banana is very important in terms of export, it's a very important component of our food security. A lot of Persons in St. Lucia, we like our banana sure. and salt fish. Mm -hmm. We like to eat our macambo. We like to eat our plantain and, 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 and fish and so on. Mm -hmm. So all these things, they're threatened. Globally, banana production is on the decline because of, of, of TR4. There are no chemicals presently to control this disease. As we saw with Black Seagull, we were lucky. Mm -hmm. There are lots of fungicides that we can use. But with TR4 now, it's a different kettle of So is that his solution now, Balfini? Is that, is that well, what as I saying? said, <laughs> we have to be prepared. Yeah. The best form of control of this disease is prevention. Right. If we can prevent this disease from coming into the country, um, presently, the disease was identified in Colombia. A disease which, which, which started in Asia, in Taiwan. It spread through Southeast Asia, Africa, and now it's in our doorstep, Colombia. Wow. So we have to move against time. So presently what we have done, we have a, a TR4 task force. We, at our, what is, at our meeting, there was a meeting in, in, in Dominican Republic where most of the banana producing countries of the Caribbean, we developed an emergency action plan. We also developed a disaster risk reduction plan so all these documents are sitting there. We need to move with haste. We need to ad adopt those, those documents. We need to review those documents. We need to go out, out there, take whatever sections in the, in, the, in, the, in the document that we feel that we can implement in St. Lucia and go out in the field, do our outreach, educate the, 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 the farmers out there as to the impacts of TR4, prepare them. Mm -hmm. We have to, the port of entry, we have to introduce food bath because it's a soil-borne disease. 
tourism is a very important pathway for us. You have persons visiting a lot of countries like Colombia right. and so on. The shoes may the have shoes, soil, vehicles, and or yeah, kind and of thing. So on, so. Tools, or uh, tools. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So we need to be proactive. Mm -hmm. As I said, the best form of control for TR4 is preparedness. Mm -hmm. We have to prevent this thing from coming into the country. Gentlemen, well, we have <laughs> exhausted the time. <laughs> you know, oh. it's fast. I mean, yeah, we are very, very quickly. So I'm very thankful for this mm -hmm. discussion. I think it was very lively. I think mm -hmm. the viewers out there, I'm sure they appreciate that discussion. We'll do it again because we mm -hmm. it's, it's an ongoing, you know, discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, Trail, TR4, TR4 definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely. So, Janki, thank you. Faisal, Litas, thank you very much right, for being right. here. Right. You've been watching well, Agriculture on the Move. Thank you for viewing and continue to watch this program because we, we, we bring you information that is relevant to you. Remember, agriculture is our business and eat fresh. St. Lucia's best. I'm Philip Sidney and I want to thank NTN and their team for getting this program live in studio. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.